Hi, I'm Curran, and we're about to make a pseudo line chart, as in a fake line chart, like the essence of a line chart, with D3. We will discuss SVG path elements, fill stroke and stroke width, stroke line cap, stroke line join, doing this with vanilla HTML, and also doing it with D3, using D3 line, configuring custom X and Y accessors, leveraging AI Assist for code generation along the way, and idiomatic D3 usage of the line generator. First, we'll take a look at this simple example with just HTML, and then we'll convert it step by step to JavaScript. Here we have index.html, which is a pretty small HTML document that has a title and some styles just so that we don't have scroll bars showing up. But the main thing is happening in the body, namely inside of this SVG element. With SVG, we need to define the width and height, otherwise it gets a default width and height. And then I'm setting fill to be none. Um, actually, that could just go on the path element now that I think of it. If we don't have that, it actually fills in the shape. So I'll just put fill none there on the path. The path element is really cool. It makes, lets you make all sorts of shapes. The stroke means the outline color is black. If I get rid of that, we don't see anything. The fill is set to none. If we don't have that, it uh, connects to itself like that. The stroke width defines how thick this is. Stroke line cap is a nice property that lets you specify how to end the lines. Without that, we get a like a square ending, but I like the roundness of it, especially if you have thick lines. And stroke line join, if we get rid of that, it makes the edges pointy. So I like to put that as round as well. All right, that's the vanilla HTML version of a pseudo line chart. This is pretty much a line chart, right? But it's just an SVG path. Oh, I forgot the most important attribute, the D attribute. D is a domain-specific string that specifies an SVG path. It's a series of com commands, the first of which is this M command, which, which says move to the pixel coordinates of x equals 72 and y equals 438. And see, if we change this, it changes the x coordinate of this first point here. If I set it to 12, it goes over there. 82 goes over there. And the second command is an L command, which says draw a line from the previous point to this other point. And then there's another L command, which says, OK, keep that line going. It's actually a polyline. So this is a polyline specified in this domain-specific language. And the last command is an L command, which is another line to. All right, that's it. Typically, you would have some D3 utilities generate the string for you. But in this example, I just wanted to show the raw nature of the D attribute. All right, that's the HTML version. Now let's make the D3 version. To do that, I'll start by forking this circles with D3 example, and I'll call it pseudo line chart with D3. Now I'll hit fork and then open up these files. Then I'll just go back and grab this HTML as a reference so I can see it over here. I'll just paste it here and make it a comment. As a quick recap of what this existing example does, it creates an SVG element. So that's the background, which I'm going to remove just to make it the same. It sets up a data array, and then it makes a circle for each of those data elements. I'm going to change this around to be a path. So instead of a circle, this will be path. And then I'll change it here as well. And then instead of data, I'm going to just use null because we just want one path. I'll remove these various circle attributes, and I'll set fill to be none like in our previous example. And I'll say to do, make the attributes match the above and see if the AI assist can do the rest. 
All right, it's got D, stroke, stroke width, all this stuff, and boom, it shows up. Oh, my gosh. Would you look at that, the power of AI. Since this has all been hot reloaded, I just need to refresh this page to get rid of those circles. And there we have it. Uh, with D3, you can make numbers, actually numbers, and then in VizHub, you can hold Alt and drag to get this hot reloading that's actually very fast now. Okay, I'll just clean this up, remove some of this dead code. And then let's take it one level further because remember I said earlier this D attribute could be computed by D3. Right now we're using D3 to set the D attribute, but we're pretty much handcrafting this string. We could use D3's line generators to do the same thing, based on some data. Let me start by extracting the points out of this string as data. So we've got this line data here. I'll get rid of these old objects and say, OK, x from this move to command is right here. And then y becomes this y property. And we don't need r and fill. And then I'll just prompt the AI to do fill in the rest of these. And I'll say x is, and then hit AI assist and hope for the best. Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, it's working. It worked. That's one way you can use the AI to uh, generate data for you. And then we can uh, import line from D3. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Yeah, here's the documentation for it. It says D3.line. And then we can pass functions for X and Y accessors. And it says here the X accessor defaults to this function, which returns the first element element of an array. But that's not what we have. So let's just use this and customize it to our data structure. I'll say const line generator equals, and I'll paste that. But instead of these accessors, we just want to use d.x and d.y. And now we just need to pass this data through this line generator to get our value for the D attribute. So I'll comment out this old one. And the new one can just be line generator of data. And it should work. That looks the same, so I think it worked. We can check if it worked by modifying some of these values. Sure enough, there it goes. See? Now we can modify the coordinates of these individual points. And you know, they don't need to be so precise. So there we go. There we have it. That's how you can make a pseudo line chart with D3. To recap, and maybe clean up, we've got this main function that takes as input a container DOM element. We set up the SVG, give it a width and a height. And we set up our data to be an array of objects, each of which has an X property and a Y property, which are both integers, or numbers, rather. We import line from D3 and then create our line generator with custom accessor functions that return X and Y properties on our data elements. And then we create a single path element using this pattern here of passing a single element array to dot data. And then we use our line generator of data. And I'll just delete that code there, that comment. And this will generate that domain-specific string, which we can actually take a look at by inspecting the DOM. And there it is. There's our DOM element. And if we change some of these values, you can see that it actually is hot reloading and replacing that string as we modify this. And there's one small simplification that we could do to make it a little bit more idiomatic D3. And that is to put data here on the path as an array of a single element, which is our array of data. 
That way we can just pass in line generator to D like so, and the behavior is the same. It's arguably a little bit more cryptic, but um, this is the kind of thing that you would use if you were creating like a multi-line chart, for example. All right, there it is, pseudo line chart with D3. Take care.